Today I'm going to make a video about shooting in harsh sunny lighting conditions because two weeks ago I took a small little holiday to the Black Forest in the south of Germany. It was only a few days long but I brought my camera with me and I wanted to take some photos while I was there. The thing is when I was there I came up across the age-hole problem of just shooting in really harsh sunny light because when you're out all day hiking it's very likely that you don't really get to pick the times or the weather conditions that you're shooting in. And on this occasion, it was really sunny. It was in the middle of the day. I know there's a lot of photography advice out there to try and avoid these kind of harsh sunny conditions. Usually a lot of photographers say to try and shoot at blue hour or golden hour or wait for the times of day and the weather conditions where the light is just better. Now, the problem with this is that many of us are just hobbyist photographers. Many of us don't have the time. Catching blue hour or golden hour can require getting up super early in the morning or staying out very late in the evening or waiting for specific weather conditions can mean that generally you just waste a lot of time waiting for the perfect time to shoot. And over the years, I've learned that a far better approach is to just bring your camera and try and work with the lighting conditions that you have. So the first tip is to lean into harsh or sunny lighting. And this is a tip that I got from Roman Fox's YouTube channel. And for me, it's been one of the like best no-brainer advices for shooting in this type of photography. In this video, Roman mentions that there's usually two types of light in these conditions. You have the harsh, high contrasty, bright type of light, and then you can have also this like dull, washed out type of light where nothing looks interesting. And the general idea here is that you should lean into whatever one you have. So if you're shooting in bright contrasty conditions, then lean into that and try and make the most of those conditions. Don't try to make contrasty conditions look flat and dull, and don't try and make flat and dull conditions look contrasty. And to be honest, I could not agree more with this, and this specific tip has helped me an awful lot when it comes to shooting in this type of light. You can't change the conditions that you're shooting in, so you might as well just go with it. The sun is gonna be shining one way or the other and your environment is gonna look the way it looks. You gotta ask yourself, how are you going to work with the light? How are you going to use all of these different elements that are coming from this? How are you going to use the harsh shadows? Can you maybe find something interesting in that? Can you find something interesting in a dull washed out scene maybe? Like there is ways to make this stuff look interesting. It's more about your way of looking at the specific situation and how you're going to work with the light rather than focusing so much on how you can change it into the perfect lighting conditions that you want. As with all types of photography, there are many ways to make a photograph look good. Lighting is very important, but so are other elements. And one of the best ones to use is color. When the lighting isn't going your way, it can be very easy to fall into the trap of thinking that your environment is dull and uninteresting and harsh and not the way you want it. And that's fine. But in this case, color can be a great way to find something that pops and bring that back into your photograph. This is especially true when it comes to that type of dull, flat light that you get in harsh conditions sometimes. Bringing color back into your frame can be a great way to add a little bit of contrast and a little bit more image. Bright sunshine also has the potential to make certain colors pop. How many photographs have you looked at from different photographers where they've taken photos on really crazy bright conditions, but you have these beautiful, vibrant colors that just pop and really stand out on an image? This is especially true in like landscape photos or in travel photography. If you look at a lot of travel photographers, they have these types of photos as well. So how do you do this? I would say to look for colorful elements in your image. Could be things like vibrant flowers or colorful buildings or maybe even a colorful piece of clothing that somebody might be wearing in your frame. And then you can use these elements to become one of the more important parts of your composition. It can really help make it stand out against a dull or a banal background. Okay, so I don't think it would be one of my videos if I didn't try and mention story at some point. Now, don't worry, I'm not gonna just have another tip where I tell you to try and find the story in something, but maybe I am. So my next tip is to just try and find better scenes and stories. So lighting is, of course, an important part of your photography, but when it's not playing ball, then one way to maybe try and rise above that is to just make an extra effort 
or put in a little bit more work to try and find better sceneries, better scenes, and more interesting stories in your photography. Of course, these things might be even better if the light was good, but as we mentioned earlier, you can't change the light when it comes to natural, harsh, sunny lighting. I'm a firm believer that if a story is good enough or the scene that you wanna show is what you wanna show, it hits the point well enough, then the lighting is what it is. Of course, maybe it could be a better photo, but you can still take the good photo that you want to take in this situation. A focus on a good story or good scenery and drawing the viewer into the narrative of what it is that you're trying to say can take the focus away from your lighting. Instead of worrying about the technical issues, try and draw the users into the subjects and the scenes that you're trying to shoot. And maybe you can even use the harsh lighting to tell that story too, like it might even be a factor in it. A good story can hold the viewer's attention despite any type of lighting conditions. So building on my previous point of leaning into a harsh light and not worrying about the technical aspects, my next tip is to just that. Do not overthink the technical side of photography when it comes to shooting in imperfect harsh lighting conditions. So the light is not what you want it to be. That's fine. That means that if you don't want to have the perfect exposure in your photo, you don't have to. You can blow out the highlights, you can underexpose the shadows. Photography is supposed to be creative at the end of the day. And when you're in conditions that you don't like, this is when you're forced to be the most creative of all. Who cares about a blown out sky if the image still says what you want it to say? Is the focus still there on the narrative that you have? Is the focus still there on the specific subject that you want to say? Then in that case, it doesn't matter. Sometimes we pay too much attention in photography to not breaking the rules. Because when we're all learning, there is specific rules that really help us and guide us, but then sometimes we get caught up in it too much. And when you're shooting in harsh lighting conditions, this is a perfect time to just break the rules. Because in conditions like this, a payout often has to be made. Sometimes it is just not possible to expose it the way you want to expose it. And by overthinking the technical aspects like this, you're just gonna create more of a challenge for yourself and more mental workload on yourself when you're out shooting. Instead, my go-to mindset with this is always to just not think about it so much, go out there and shoot, and more so lean into the authentic side of it. Now, I talk about this a lot in videos and my general feeling in photography. This Maybe this is terrible advice, but my go-to is always more about what I'm feeling at the time rather than what's the perfect photo to tell. And when I'm in conditions like this, sometimes harsh bright light is exactly what I want to say. It's exactly what I'm feeling. It's exactly the mood of the photograph that I'm trying to convey. So why not go for it? Like sometimes an overexposed scene can show or can feel more authentic, like a more authentic summer day. Like for example, these photos in the Black Forest two weeks ago, it was hot, like really hot. It was really sunny, it was really bright. This is the look that I wanna get of my photographs and that might mean blowing out my highlights sometimes. It might mean overexposing my photographs quite a lot. When I was editing, I noticed like that that's what I did for most of them. I just bumped up the exposure a lot and I thought it gave the look that I wanted it to have. So what I'm trying to say here is don't be afraid to break the rules. Don't be afraid to be spontaneous and creative. It's going to allow you to take more photographs and in my opinion take better photographs. And most importantly I want to say it again to just try and keep an eye on what it is you want your photos to feel like. I always think that when you boil it down to it a really good simple mindset to get into from the start is just try and think about how you feel and how you want your photographs to feel and I think that will really help you a lot no matter what lighting conditions that you're in. And it's especially true with these bright, sunny summer photographs. There can be a real feeling and a real mood about that, despite the fact that the light is never perfect. And if you wanna learn more on that, I made a video a few weeks back on how I photograph with this type of mindset and just some tips along that. So feel free to check that out. And in the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll be back with another video really soon.